Welcome to another Guide You Outdoors video. We're here at Surprise Lake in Colorado. We're hiking the Gore Range for a couple days. We're gonna be talking about basics of backpacking and hopefully inspire you to get out and do a hike like this. So come along. A short hike in today to Surprise Lake and that's on purpose to acclimatize to the 10,000 foot elevation and just play, immerse ourselves in nature and kind of leave behind anything and be here. So we're heading to another glacial lake tomorrow but for now we're going to enjoy this beautiful spot. So I've got a little nylon bag here with a carabiner on it and some P-cord wrapped around this. And I'm just going to grab a rock, throw it in the bag. Here's my limb. I want something off the tree so if the bear climbs a tree it can't reach it. Um, and high enough it, that the bear can't reach it on its hind legs. So this is a little low for my standards. but. We're going to use this just for purposes of beautiful view and to show you how to do it. I've let out my P cord. I've thrown a rock in the stuff sack. Hold on to one end, throw the other over the branch. With my carabiner and my food bag, and haul it up. I'll just tie it off to the closest tree. There you go, bear bag. Okay, we found a nice water source. It's a stream, it's fast moving, and we're pretty high up. Get water. Step two, we need to purify our water. And I didn't dip my Nalgene in the river because that would contaminate the outside rim and I don't have a great way of sanitizing that. So I'm gonna unscrew this cap and pour carefully into the Nalgene without trying to hit the lip. And what I'm purifying with today is a UV SteriPen, which uses UV light to sterilize the bacteria so they can't breed in your stomach. And it's really simple. You get to drink it after 90 seconds and you taste that stream without any iodine or aquamira flavor added. So just press the button, turns on, I stick it in the water, and it gives me a timer. And you can't see it now, but there's the UV light is lit up and I'm just gonna stir it for 90 seconds per liter. All right, my 90 seconds is up. Shake that off. And now, you can drink it straight away. Mm. Tap the rock.
broken down camp. Now how do we get all our gear back into our backpack so it's well balanced and all fits well? I re highly recommend everything in stuff sacks. My favorite for clothes bags is a little vent down here. Get all the air out, roll it shut. So everything I have is in stuff sacks and we're gonna load the sleeping bag first. I won't need my down jacket again until tonight so I'm gonna use the crevice next to the sleeping bag and just crunch this in there. Now we want most of our weight right on our hips, so right in this area. So our sleeping bag is right here creating a little buffer. Also works when you take your pack off, you can sit on it nice. You know you're not squishing food or breaking tent poles. And then here comes all my food, because that's the heaviest. Maybe you want to leave a couple snacks on top in your brain or in the hip belt pocket. Here's the second bag. I'm carrying all the food. Andrea's got the tent. Just make sure you kind of split up weight. Um, you're going to want your rain gear relatively close to the top. Just even out both sides with weight. And then my clothes aren't too heavy, so I can just throw those in top. Some people put these on the side, but if you've got an inflatable, I don't recommend that because the trees are gonna tear it up. I've got everything loaded in here. If it's gonna rain or you're hitting a summit, maybe you'll wanna take your windbreaker slash rain jacket just throw it under the brain. Things you want to think about in outside pockets are things you want to be able to reach at any moment, like first aid kit, water, snacks, uh, water purification. And get this up to our knee, throw an arm in. You want your hip belt right on those little balls on your hips, going right here. So high shoulders, clip it at the waist, make sure it's on those, the balls of your hips are right in the center of your hip belt, and then tighten down. As far as your shoulder straps, you want your backpack just riding close here. There's no weight going on your shoulders. I can get a hand in on either side. All my weight is on my hips, so that's why we loaded our heaviest stuff right here. And then, if you feel it wobbling back here, these two straps, pull the load closer to your back. But again, try to keep pressure off your shoulders. It should be just keeping the bag there with a little movement right to left. And I find this is a great place for your camera. If your camera's in your backpack, you'll never use it. Make sure you have quick access. Feeling pretty balanced. Tighten these a little bit more. And we're off. Incredible. Weather is perfect. Can't imagine a nicer day. Sunshine, maybe like 60 something degrees. And we just hit an incredible view from up top of like the entire valley with the bright yellow aspens below and a couple of huge mountains in the background. So I don't know how we're going to top that, but I'm looking forward to seeing if we can. How are you doing, Andrea? Why don't you want to talk about it? <laughs> this is a beautiful. Filming me at my best. <laughs> this is beautiful. How could you be reeling in pain? I'm in a lot of pain. <sighs> you 
Here comes the rain. Knees are hurting. Three more miles. We've arrived at Lost Lake. We've set out for this destination, so I'm glad we could make it. It was a brutal uphill for only about a thousand feet, but it, we were both feeling it in the knees. But it's amazing what a hot meal and a good view will do for your mind, body, and spirit. So we're gonna crawl in the sleeping bag and rest those sore knees and full stomachs and cameled up with water from Lost Lake. Good morning from Lost Lake. <laughs> it's nice on these mornings where you don't have to make any mileage. You can just sit and absorb the sun, enjoy your coffee, let your rain tarp dry out a little, and just enjoy the space that you spent the night. And, uh, so far my left knee doesn't really seem to be hurting, but we'll see when I get my pack on. It was pretty bad yesterday. Yeah, my knee's hurting right here. Mm. And this is a good plug for trekking poles. If you don't, if you haven't discovered trekking poles, get a pair. 30% less resistant on your knees. And it's not only stepping up, you can kind of power lift with your hands, all that weight on your back, but also, more importantly, plant your poles and then lower yourself to the ground as opposed to dropping all that, the 40 pound pack right on your knee and destroying it. We're descending Lost Lake and we're entering this aspen forest. Aspen are cool trees because they have these prominent eyes in the bark. And it looks like last night's wind took down all the leaves, at least on this side of the valley. So a misfortune for those behind us, but we got great views of it yesterday. Down we go. Anytime you feel a hot spot on your foot, you want to stop and take care of it immediately. So, I'm feeling a hot spot. And look, something's rubbing because there's a hole in my sock. So, that's an easy fix, change socks. This redness is the hot spot we're talking about. That's the blister that resulted in burst. But it's still okay. We can still save it. <laughs> we're just gonna throw some medical tape on it. And that'll reduce the friction between that redness spot and her back of her shoe. Okay, it's been in a relatively easy seven miles. We're at an intersection here between Slate Lake and a little Gore Range Trail. And we're gonna keep on going. But I thought this was a interesting cabin in the woods to take a little stop and maybe have a little snack. Every morning we've been doing granola and powdered milk. And today we're gonna switch it up with some dehydrated applesauce but in boiled water. So it'll be hot after I already made our coffee. So we're good there. Wow. This is great. This looks 
just like applesauce. But does it taste like applesauce? Mmm, I think they added some sugar, but applesauce is it just come off the stove. Delicious. Right, Sam? Pepperoni, cream cheese, tortilla. Mmm. This is one of those you don't knock it till you try it lunches. Right here I'm making a little apple peanut butter tortilla wrap. So we've got whole wheat tortillas, maple peanut butter, and pink lady apples. Dehydrated ice cream sandwich. Yes, this is a real ice cream sandwich with real vanilla ice cream between two delicious cookie wafers. You'll be astonished by the taste. <laughs> it looks like a, I don't know if you, you'd like find this in your grandma's drawer or something. Um, but let's, let's try it out. Wow. Definitely got a lot of crunch. I don't know what I'm tasting. A big wafer of dryness. For dinners we've been having a mountain house, and as we learned from the incident with the ice cream sandwich, there's no limit to what they won't dehydrate, or rehydrate rather, um, and neither do I. So we're having chicken and mashed potatoes. Now these are expensive, so if you can't afford these, you can base your dinners around these meals that are only about a buck. But regardless, put together a little kitchen so you can spice things up. Um, right here is ours. We got salt and pepper, sriracha, oil, brown sugar, some curry, a pot scrubby, and two spoons. So pretty minimalistic. We brought some of our favorite spices and just a way to give those meals a little kick. For tonight, I pre-diced onion and bagged it up. We're gonna just throw it in some oil and brown sugar and caramelize them and throw it in with our meal. Not a bad spot to camp for our third night. talk about when hiking with your dog. In the Gore Range, you must have a dog on a leash. So I've got him attached with a fisherman's knot to his backpack, and it can just slide. I can slide it up and have him hike behind me, or let him go and have him go in front. And it's attached to my hip belt, because if he pulls at any point, it pulls my center of gravity, as opposed to in my hand, it, it'll topple me over. You have a possibility of getting a fine for having your dog off the leash. Also, you can get kicked off the trail. So, there's not just those reasons for having your dog on a leash. If your dog happened to chase a moose and it kicked him, that's game over for a pooch. Also, bears. If your dog is up and scares a bear, the bear charges your dog, your dog comes running back to you and past you. Now you're between a pissed off bear and your dog not a good situation. As you can see, Summit's wearing his hunting season style with bright colors because he looks like a little black bear and we don't want him getting shot. And he's carrying about three days of food and we're carrying two days of food for him and his water. And if you ever see him limping or anything like that, be prepared to take his weight. Happy hiking with your dog. Come on, Sam. Let's go. Summit, leave it. Summit is on edge. And this is why we have our dogs tied up because he's just scared up a grouse and he would be after that thing. Right up in the tree there.
safe away from predators. We've been smelling smoke since we left our campsite. You can kind of see it through the trees and there's a lot of helicopter activity, so I hope we're not dealing with a forest fire that close. Not a pleasant thought having a forest fire with all this dead trees around you. Let's get out of here. We've climbed well away from this fire here and have kind of set our worries to ease because we ran into a moose hunter who was bringing back some, some big legs of meat back to his camp. And he says, where this fire is, it's a clear cut field and sometimes they do control burns down there. So hopefully that's what's going on, makes us feel better. His camp's down in that valley and he's going there, so we're heading away from it good place for lunch and recharge. How are your knees feeling? Better. We were told we'd have the gore range to ourselves because it lacks 14,000 footers. But what it lacks in peat bagging, it gains in beauty and wildlife. Well, my suspicions were confirmed. Slate Creek to Surprise Lake. We started at Surprise Lake in camp couple nights in between these points. Um, so a little scary. We had fortunate timing and I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope it inspires you to get out there and try one of these on your own and bring a friend.